Good afternoon, everybody. This is a special occasion because we're about to honor John R. Jack Item, who most everybody in this room has met at some point. And if you haven't met him in person, you certainly know something about him. Because Jack has simply been ubiquitous in our entire profession of boarding schools. Most particularly at the Wyoming Seminary, which Jack Plumby reminds us is neither in Wyoming nor is it a seminary. <laughs> seminary. But it's also true that Jack spreads the fame of Wyoming Seminary and indeed the boarding school world through his incredible work with so many different associations, institutions, and organizations that serve our profession. And that makes him special to all of us. So if there are just one or two of us who haven't met him and who don't yet know something about him, you will. The difficulty is grappling with the, all the many different associations that Jack has. You would think it would be a relatively easy task because so many of us know so much about it. But in fact, it's very difficult to comprehend all the many facets, all the many different arenas that Jack has served. One to answer to this problem is simply to go over some biographical facts. Jack is a native of Pennsylvania, the rings right and true to me, Jack, uh, as, a, as a denizen of Gettysburg, a, a small town with a long history. And Jack went to Lycoming University in Pennsylvania, and then on to Drew University, where he took a Master's of Divinity, hence becoming an elder in the Methodist Church, and thus the Reverend Jack Guy. But from the very beginning, Jack linked his work with the church with his educational passion and commitment. Early on, he became a youth minister, serving young people, chairing pre-collegiate commissions and higher educational ministries for the Methodist Church, even as he proceeded to join the Wyoming Seminary community as dean of admissions and financial aid in 1969. A role that he has continued to champion and expand all these many years. I'm counting about 45 at least, Jack, if not more. In his role as admissions director, Jack found a ready platform for his passion to increase Wyoming Seminary's outreach to students across the country and then ultimately around the world. He also expanded the Sam's commitments to awarding much greater financial aid. This allowed so many students with little or no means to come and access a first-class education. One colleague noted that Jack led the Wyoming Seminary Admissions Office like he was an orchestra conductor, quote, gracefully moving from meeting to phone call to student interaction to family interview, all the while keeping his eyes on the big picture. And Jack manages the office in such a way that the music plays on uninterrupted, his smooth, effective, honest, hard-working approach inspires many and supports the institution. Now, all of this would have been quite enough citation for any two people. But this is only to scratch the surface. Because as most of us know, Jack went on to become an absolute pioneer in structuring international admissions and exchange programs abroad. He began by accepting students from Japan and Korea Saudi Arabia in the 1980s. And in the 1990s, he added the Thai Scholars Program, a program that in which he not only admitted students, accepted them to the STEM, but actually hosted their orientation program for all boarding schools. And I must say, Exeter itself has been a better fishery of Jack's wisdom in that regard. The appellation of pioneer seems to fit. In fact, Bob Stanley of ASSIST, noted president of ASSIST, noted that he used the same term, pioneer, in explaining that it was Jack who got the institution of assist to increase the number of countries and the number of students involved, bringing them not just to Wyoming Seminary, but to all our represented boarding schools in the assist umbrella. Most recently, Jack has added not only Western Europe, but Central and Eastern Europe to his 
repertoire. In the process, he's, a, he's visited Estonia, Slovakia, Macedonia, and so many other countries. I think somewhere, one of his colleagues told me that he's up to 80 countries that he's either visited, or recruited, or enticed, or accepted students from the far flung corners of the globe. The wonderful part about Jack, though, is as you, if you get to know him, as you meet him, or you engage with him in one of the many programs that he's begun, is that Jack not only realized there was an international market of young people around the world interested in American boarding schools, but he actually helped to create and induce the market with his sheer model of energy and excellence, his leadership and his commitment to this kind of travel. No one would know he was overseeing all these different organizational programs because such is his devotion to the individual student that everyone remarks they will never forget him once they've been interviewed by him. I know this personally because Jack and I have had, or I've had the privilege of working with Jack, not only with ASSIST, but with SSAT, with NAIS, with FAIS, and, of course, TABS itself. In each of his commitments, in each of these organizations, Jack has forwarded nothing less than a global, international vision. I could go on at greater length, but if we cited all of Jack's accomplishments and all his awards, we'd be here the rest of the afternoon. But there is one additional part of Jack's character that we have to extol, and that is Jack's fundamental sense of family, of family and belonging. It underscores every aspect of his other commitments. In between his BA and his MA, Jack took time out to court and marry his childhood sweetheart, Elaine, who joins him today at the table. And also, there are two children, John and Jennifer. Jennifer is here with Jack's grandson, Liam. But what is most remarkable is how Jack conspired to keep the family close by in joining them to join him on the faculty and administration and staff of Wyoming Seminary. Elaine is appropriately a teacher of global languages. Jennifer, I know, joined the admissions team. John is a teacher, I understand, of science. I've not met John but a wonderful teacher of science and perhaps mathematics as well. And so he keeps all his family close by, his sense of belonging, his rock, which allows him to extend his influence around the world. The Wyoming Seminary Mission Statement says this. As an independent college preparatory school, Wyoming Seminary seeks to create active learners, responsible citizens, community leaders, and ethical individuals ready to take their place in the global community of the 21st century. As I think about it, active learner, responsible citizen, community leader, and ethical individual, it is a perfect description of the Reverend Jack Iden himself. Jack, we salute you.
Steve, uh, as I think many of you know, was front and center when Taft was very young. And uh, he was in part responsible for Taft's coming of age and becoming uh, pretty much self-sufficient along the way. And uh, Taft was ever so grateful to the sponsorship of SSATV and NEIS in its infancy. But there came a time when it needed to be more independent. And Steve was certainly a very important part of that movement. He certainly expanded the mission of TAPS to include uh, student services and academia. And uh, that has been an immense benefit to the schools that are a part of the TAPS organization. Steve is a person who was the proponent for a conference like this. He thought that TAPS could have such an immense influence on our schools if it brought together key people from the schools and had them share ideas. And certainly Steve was a very important part of the international initiatives that we all benefit from today as well. He was a terrific leader, a courageous risk taker, and it was a gift to work with him. He certainly would have stood tall yesterday when we heard the strategic plan laid before us, and he would be very proud of that, uh, of that plan and how TABS has grown through the years. I consider myself to be very lucky for the opportunities that have been put before me. The boarding school world is filled with incredible people, and I am grateful for the enriching experiences they have all provided me. Certainly, there are many here who should be included on that long list, but I will, at the risk of leaving too many people out, just quickly say thanks to the Steve Banks and the Amy Groovers, the Keith Uphams and the Bob and Ann Stanleys and the Flanagans and Marty Milne and Meg uh, Bolton and uh, Mike Mulligan for all that you have meant to me in my life. Thank you for your patience and working with me on various committees and various boards. Thank you to my Wyoming Seminary colleagues, many of whom are right down here in the front tables. I am so grateful for their patience and understanding and their support in all that we've done as we've worked together through the years. And certainly I say thank you to my travel buddies through the years, and there have been many, and many of them are right here in the room tonight as well. And I'm very incredible, great, incredibly grateful to you for all that you've done and meant. It's been fun seeing the world, and it's been just terrific to bring great kids back to build our school communities. And certainly, thank you to my family, whom you've already met. Elaine is over there, and uh, Jennifer, and young Liam. That was a surprise last night when they got out of the car, and Liam was here, and I'm delighted that he could be here. With us. The only problem is, he's missing a spelling <laughs> test today. <laughs> and I'm hoping that he can uh, rebound from that. <laughs> It's incredibly humbling to consider those who have already been honored with the Rizika kind of compass. Tom Wilcox, the founder of the Boarding Schools Committee, which is the task that we know today. Mary Lou Liebheimer, who was a constant guide in her work on the board to both TAPS and SSATV, where she and I rub shoulders and elbows together now and then. And uh, there is no one who would influence schools with greater sense of values than Mary Lou Liebheimer. L.A. Griffin, an outstanding leader and pace setter among those uh, involved in student services. And of course, Rick Schubert, who uh, waxes on much too eloquently about the productions, but has been such a great influence uh, in the school industry as well. These are giants in the boarding school community who have shaped our schools immensely. And it's such an unbelievable honor to be in their company. So I say once again, thank you very much to all those who have spoken to the TAP board, and thank you to all of you.